Okay, CC students. Uh, next topic that we're going to talk about is going to be closing argument. And this is uh, part two of our closing argument videos. The first one uh, was about the general overview of what you're trying to accomplish in closing argument. <clears throat> this is going to be how to prepare for your closing argument. Again, refer to your uh, mock trial uh, packet, which provides the outline of the closing argument. And, and we'll talk more about that in this video. But I, I just want to talk about some, some general points and some tips I think that will be helpful uh, for you as you get ready to do your closing argument. First of all, um, your, your closing argument needs to be flexible, but you also need to memorize it. So this is a, a very difficult task, and I think students struggle with this because um, you, you want to have as much of this memorized as possible, but you also need to be flexible, and here's why. You, in the opening statement, you're going to talk about what the evidence is going to show. But in the closing argument, you begin to draw inferences from the testimony that's been presented. And you can't present anything in your closing argument that has not been uh, testified to or has not been made part of the record by an exhibit during the trial. So what I mean is, if, if you have a witness and you're on the prosecution side, and you have a police officer as the witness, and that police officer is going to testify to um, something that occurred, maybe a car accident or something. If the police, and you say that in, in your opening statement, you're going to hear from the police officer and he's going to talk about this car accident. When you get to your closing argument, if the police officer does not testify about the car accident, you cannot argue in your closing argument about the police officer's testimony about the car accident. Even if it's part of your mock trial packet, even if it's part of their written statement, even if it's part of a police report, doesn't matter because it's like it never existed unless that police officer or another witness gets on the stand and provides that testimony. You can't use that in your closing argument. So it's a really important point. So you need to memorize what you believe is going to be testified to during the direct examination or throughout the course of the trial if you're the one doing closing argument. But you need to be so flexible that in the event that that testimony does not come out during the direct examination or cross-examination, then you need to be prepared to adapt your closing argument and be flexible in your closing argument to accommodate for that. So here's some tips that I'm going to talk about in order to do this. Um, one thing right here, so I put up here and it probably is cut off, but I say uh, be flexible, but memorize your closing argument and pay attention and also read the packet. And what I mean by pay attention is pay attention to the witness's answers. And the way that you're going to do this is, is you can pick whatever way you feel comfortable with. One tip that I have is that you will um, you'll do, according to your mock trial packet, you're going to do a bare bones outline. And I, I take it a little bit step further um, because they say to do a bare bones outline allowing main points to be added. Here's my two cents. Take it for what it's worth. I would say make an outline checklist. And what I mean by that is... If you're, it doesn't matter which side you're on, but let's just say you're the prosecuting side and you believe witnesses are going to um, testify that the sky is blue. Okay, so that's my first point here. When that witness testifies that the sky is blue, you're listening for that to occur and you check it off. So you're going to have an outline much like this. These are the points that you believe are going to come out in the prosecution. The sky is blue that the, later on the clouds came. That's my second point. When the witness testifies to that, and I know you can't read it because there's a glare on the screen, and I apologize about that, but the first one is sky is blue, and the other one is that uh, the clouds came. There might be certain legal conclusions that you want to connect to that. So you're going to have a point. The prosecution witness is going to testify the sky is blue, and what conclusion, what inference are you drawing from that testimony? You're going to list that in your outline. When the witness testifies to that, you check it off. That way, when you get up to do your closing argument, you can quickly summarize and look down there, and you've already memorized it, and you said, oh, yeah, he said that. The witness said this. He said the sky was blue. He said the clouds came. Also, on the defense side, maybe you're going to bring out a point that it was 70 degrees, and it was a Friday. Let's say this point doesn't come out, that it was on a Friday. So when you get up to give your closing argument, you're going to make these points. You're going to say, remember that uh, witness said the sky was blue? Here's the conclusion that I want to draw from that. Remember he said the clouds came? 
He also testified it was 70 degrees. Now, the point about my closing argument when I want to talk about it being a Friday, I leave that out of my closing argument because that evidence never came in. And the only way I know that is I'm paying attention, I'm listening, I have a checklist based on these pieces of evidence. I also want to leave room on my checklist for additional facts. Always, something's going to come in that you didn't anticipate. A witness is going to misstate something. A witness is going to offer more information than is in their witness statement. Something's going to happen. You need to prepare for that. So leave room for that, and you can adapt that into your closing argument. Um, one important thing to do is summarize the statute. What is the law in your case? What does the prosecution have to prove? You want to summarize that in your closing argument. You want to coordinate your closing argument with the opening statement. So this is like the bookends of the case. The opening statement told us what the evidence was going to show. Now you're going to coordinate that. What in your, As you're doing your closing, what did your team tell the jury they were going to hear as part of the opening statement? You make sure that you go back and remind them, we told you you were going to hear from this witness. Guess what? This witness got up and what did they tell you? Boom, boom, boom. We told you you're going to hear from this witness. This witness came up. What did they tell you? Boom. And we have a checklist. We have this all laid out. We coordinated that between the opening statement and the closing argument. The difference, though, is, you know, not only did we tell you you were going to hear these witnesses, but now in the closing argument, we can tell you why that testimony is important and why what inferences the jury should draw from that, why they shouldn't believe the witness, those types of things. So we're going to coordinate that. We want to make sure that our closing argument fits your theme. As you develop a theme as a team, I didn't even mean to make that rhyme, but whatever your theme is, you want to make sure that your closing argument fits in the theme. You want to follow a format, and your mock trial packet talks about the format that you should follow. Stick to that format. One thing is they say begin with, may it please the court. You know, I would recommend that you do that. Tell the jury why the case is significant. This case is important for a variety of reasons, and, and tell them that. Outline the facts, you know, and, and connect the facts to the statute or the elements. Um, and and uh, did or didn't we prove the elements? So if, if the case is about drunk driving, you have to prove, you know, that you operated a motor vehicle after drinking alcohol and you drove... Um, a motor vehicle on a roadway in the Commonwealth, and within two hours of driving your motor vehicle, your blood alcohol level was X. Well, not only do I now tell them those elements again that I had to prove, but what evidence is connected to driving a motor vehicle on a roadway? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from this witness, and they told you that this person was driving, or the defendant admitted they were driving, and that um, they drove on a roadway in the, in the Commonwealth. Well, this road that the driver was pulled over on is a roadway in the Commonwealth. Make sure that, don't assume that the jury can make that connection. Help them make that connection yourself. And connect the facts of the case in your closing argument to the statutes, to the elements that you have to prove. This is hard stuff, people, but you can do it. Okay? Work with your team and do this. Highlight evidence and testimony. So you want to highlight evidence and testimony from your witnesses. Okay? So whatever, witness, whatever your witnesses talked about, you want to highlight that. Put that in a favorable light. And then you want to figure out a way to refute your opponent's testimony. So if they have a witness that got up there and testified, and somehow there's something wrong with their credibility, you've impeached their character or their credibility, right? We talked about that in, in our evidence video. You want to refute your opponent's testimony. And use facts, use their testimony, use inconsistencies. Talk about ways that you this witness is not credible. And raise up the credibility of your witnesses. This is trying cases. This is what we do. And please don't forget this. Because this happens all the time. You get to the end of your closing argument. You just want to sit down because you've been so nervous. And you're the last one to speak. And it is, it is tough. But please, set forth the request relief that you've requested. Tell them what you want to do. Now, as prosecutor, it was easy because I would say, I want you to find the defendant guilty because that's what I wanted them to do. So do that. Ask for that and uh, make sure that you uh, state the relief that you're requesting. Don't forget to do that. And um, that you do it over and over again. You know, it, it's okay to say it more than once. Remind the jury of what you're asking them to do. Hope this video has been helpful. We're going to uh, do some evidence videos. Stay healthy, wash your hands, and um, I'll be, be talking to you later on this week.
Take care.